So Jeremy Bentham is one of the leading philosophers and jurists of our modern times. Uh, he was foundational to setting up the legal system in the UK but also Australia and America and he wrote on a great deal of topics. Um, a lot of his ideas have been foundational to modern society. Um, but his manuscripts which are held in special collections at University College London with, and also some of them in the British Library were inaccessible to people. We had over a hundred thousand folios of manuscripts and the, the Bentham project was set up in the 1950s to understand the work of Jeremy Bentham and over a 40 year period they had managed to go through 10,000 of these manuscripts and, and publish some of them and the question was could we use technology to speed that up? Could we digitise the material? And the prime meeting, the first meeting that we had was about digitisation. Could we digitise the whole lot? But we're in a state now where you don't get money for digitisation. Um, and at the time, crowdsourcing was just becoming this technique which was being used online. And this is nearly 10 years ago now, right? So crowdsourcing now is very familiar, but at the time, crowdsourcing was not being really used at any scale in the library and archive community. So the, we put together a funding proposal which was to digitise the manuscripts but also to build this interface as volunteers to help transcribe them and the research element of that was to see whether or not we could use volunteer labour to do something which had been traditionally expected to be a scholarly task um, and whether there was a mechanism that we could build that would speed up the transcription of these manuscripts and make them available for others, scholars but also general public, much faster. So we had schools, people from um, school kids coming from um, different parts of the UK to come and do some transcription and we went out into the community, I think we went to Bentham's old school in Westminster and, and did a little talk there and we did a couple of, of public events in, in the first year both in, in UCL and various other, uh, other locations. We spoke to the Women's Institute at one point. Um, yeah, yeah, just really trying to, to raise the profile of the project and to get people, um, to get people involved and get people in coding. Um, but the majority of what we ended up calling super users, the people who came back and transcribed lots and lots and lots, were just kind of serendipitous discoveries. Um, you know, they weren't people that we spoke to and told about Transcribe Bentham when they then joined up. They, they found out about the project somewhere and really enjoyed contributing to it. It was a combination of everything we could think of, digital and non-digital. We did a lot of outreach on Facebook and Twitter, but a lot of the folks it turns out that we want to hit are not like digitally savvy folks. They're not spending a lot of time on Facebook and Twitter. Like They want to sit down at a computer and help us, but that doesn't mean to say that they are spending a lot of time on Reddit, you know? Um, the biggest influx of user numbers was when we got coverage in print media. So newspapers, magazines. Um, people have written about this. I mean, we've written about it in our Transcribe Bentham articles, but others have written about the serendipitous aspect as well. How you, how you can plan very, very carefully for how you would identify and target an audience that you think would be really good at doing this, but that some of it is just down to chance is people you know, happening across it and finding out that wow, this is something I really enjoy doing. So some of it you just really can't plan for. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with Transcribe Bentham. It's been a pleasure to meet some of the volunteers and to get to know them. It is an ongoing pleasure for me. I'm no longer in, in London personally, but I am still part of the team, which I'm thankful for, that they wanted me to continue to be part of the team. And uh, it is one of the stories of interdisciplinary digital humanities research that a, the project's a success, but also the benefit to me in working with that diverse community, the amount I have learned 
and the opportunities I have, it's been, it's been fantastic and I'm very appreciative of it.